the decision you have to make when you have to choose a specific uh, indicator and uh, how to choose among many. So there will be Francesca and Natalia, so they both work, both work with me at ICTP. So Francesca was the contributing author of our chapter as well. Natalia not because she was not here yet, <laughs> but she's new. Um, and uh, yeah, they both work, work for, with me on this uh, project that is called I4C, in which we are going to assess uh, the um, European hazard at different global warming levels. Therefore, we are using this climatic impact driver also in this project as a follow up of our IPCC expertise. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, thank you for being here uh, in, on the last day of uh, last session of lab. And uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna uh, go to sit down because uh, there is a microphone for, uh, for Zoom. Okay. So um, I will start with uh, an introduction and um, uh, focusing attention on 10 definitions from the IPCC assessment report on risk. Risk is defined as the potential for adverse consequences for human or ecological systems. So in the context of climate change impact of climate change, uh, the, the risk um, can arise from uh, climate change impacts as well as from uh, human responses to climate change. In this session, we will focus the attention on impacts. So on, the, uh, yes, on, on, on impacts. So in the context of climate change impacts, risk is uh, defined as the um, inter, as a, um, a dynamic interaction on, of uh, three um, concepts: hazard, that are uh, the potential occurrence of a natural or human-induced physical event or trend. On um, that, that can cause uh, loss of life, injury, or uh, um, loss of property, infrastructure, uh, and so on. And uh, we uh, will focus on uh, climate-related hazards in, that include the extreme weather and climate events. So um, besides hazard, we have vulnerability um, that uh, can. Uh, uh, contribute to the risk uh, definition. Vulnerability is the propensity uh, of the disposition to be adversely affected. Uh, and uh, this is uh, a concept that, con that uh, uh, contains also the idea of the lack of uh, the capacity of adaptation or uh, the um, and uh, um, or the sensitivity uh, to harm, for example. And uh, exposure. Exposure is the presence of people or species or uh, ecosystems, and uh, but also environmental functions, uh, services, uh, economic, societal assets. Uh, so everything that could be adversely affected. Uh, so risk defined in this context um, as um, as consequences impacts. Uh, impacts as well the consequences of realized risks uh, on natural and human ecosystems. And they can be adverse but also beneficial. And uh, this uh, last concept is um, uh, strictly connected with the definition of climate impact drivers. In fact, climate impact drivers are physical climate system conditions um, that affect an element of society or ecosystem. But the terminology is in contrast with the term hazards, since it provides a more value neutral characterization of climate changes that, um, can, uh, that uh, um, has a uh, um, definition without a prejudging on the potential impacts of climate change. Extremes are a category of seed, of seed corresponding to unusual events with respect to the range of the observed values of uh, that variable. Climate impact drivers 
may not be related only to extremes, uh, but they can, uh, for example, uh, be related to, uh, for example, for the, the rate of uh, coastline recession, we don't have an extreme in the of, for this uh, type kind of event, but we have um, uh, a risk connected with this, uh, this climate impact driver uh, that is uh, strictly connected with the sea level rise, for example. Uh, climate impact driver indexes are numerical computa uh, computable indexes um, that are done using one or a combination of uh, climatic variables the, uh, that, and uh, are indexes that are designed to measure the intensity of the climatic impact driver or the probability of exceedance uh, at threshold. Indexes are in principle computable from observation, pre-analysis, model simulations. Uh, but uh, the important thing is that uh, when um, we want to compare all these uh, different data sets, uh, we, um, uh, we have to, um, be at to pay attention to uh, the, the scale um, um, at which uh, the index is computed. Uh, for example, for extreme, extreme pre precipitation uh, event, um, um, it can have a lower magnitude if we consider a large grid cell, uh, but it would be uh, more and more large if we, if we consider the same index uh, computed in a single station um, inside that grid cell. So this is a, a list of uh, extreme indexes that is that has been um, identified in the in the report in the IPCC report, and um, they are um, it is a very um, complete list um, uh, where indexes are divided in indexes uh, um, based on uh, on temperature, on precipitation. Uh, drought and so on. And uh, uh, the, all these indexes are then um, organized in categories. Um, they uh, have been identified uh, um, seven categories, seven six categories that are heat and cold, wet and dry, wind, snow and ice, coastal, open ocean, and other. And for each of these categories, uh, there are many indexes that have been identified. Uh, for example, now I will show you uh, some uh, practical example of the indexes that are uh, that have been computed in some words that uh, we, we did in the past, and just to um, give you an idea of how they appear when we did, uh, for example, a computation uh, over a reference period or when we did a change, so for the climate projection of these, uh, these indexes. So this, for example, for the, the sixth category of heat is the uh, heat 35, that is the number of days with uh, maximum temperature uh, greater than 35 degrees. Uh, the, uh, this is another um, index that is the cooling degree days, CDD, that is, is a measure of the energy consumption uh, for cooling in hot environment. Uh, this is uh, um, computed uh, solving um, this, uh, this Simple, uh, this simple operation, uh, a threshold uh, is being um, uh, fixed, uh, like uh, 22 uh, degree, and then we need to use uh, web as input uh, daily uh, minimum, maximum, and mean temperature, and then we put, uh, can compute uh, with these uh, formulas uh, the, the index. If we uh, want the index computed for the whole year, then we will uh, um, sum all the all the daily indexes uh, within the, the, that very key. 
The same for the same, but for the um, the cold uh, category, we have the heating degree days that is similar to the CDD, but uh, uh, with a threshold that is uh, for uh, uh, cold um, for uh, for uh, for. Heat. See, for cold environment, and uh, it is uh, a threshold of 15.5 uh, degree. And uh, even here, we have uh, to we have to uh, to use uh, as input the minimum, maximum, and minimum temperature. Uh, um, for uh, what uh, concerns the drought uh, category, uh, an index that can be used, which is uh, mostly used uh, even in the IPCC uh, report, uh, is a standard uh, precipitation index that is uh, an index designed to quantify the precipitation deficit uh, for multiple time scale. Uh, so it can reflect the, the impact of drought on the availability of different water resources. Uh, the calculation of P, uh, for the calculation of P, we need uh, a monthly precipitation time period. So this time is not daily, but monthly precipitation. And we need a time series that is at least of 30 years. A set uh, then uh, we have to define um, a time window, so that will be uh, our time scale, and uh, um, this time window will be uh, from uh, can be from three months uh, typically uh, to uh, twenty four months, and then uh, for uh, each uh, set of time scale that we defined, we have to uh, compute a running mean. Um, now then. Um, with uh, once uh, we computed this random mean uh, for each uh, data set, uh, each data set is uh, fitted to the gamma to a gamma distribution, and then the values from this probability distribution are then transformed into a normal uh, distribution so that uh, the uh, mean speed for desired location and period is zero and the standard deviation equal to one. Uh, in, this, uh, in this way, we have an index that has uh, these kind of values uh, from uh, minus three to uh, plus three, and uh, each of these values uh, correspond to a uh, probability. And in particular, for example, uh, positive spin values indicate uh, indicate uh, precipitation that is greater than the median. So we have this value, so values, and uh, so um, values around uh, zero and uh, plus three um, will uh, represent categories from near normal to extremely wet, and whereas a P index negative. Uh, will uh, represent uh, conditions that are uh, mm, less than the median precipitation, so the conditions from near normal to extremely dry. Uh, according to the uh, time scale that uh, we choose, we can uh, have uh, an evaluation of drought that is different. For example, if we choose uh, a time uh, scale so um, uh, that is short, um, a short accumulation period from one month to three months, for example, we um, spoke about, we can speak about the meteorological drought. From three to uh, 12 months, um, we, um, we can uh, speak about uh, uh, agricultural drought. drought. Uh, in fact, the, in this case, the P uh, will be an indicator for reduced spring flow and reservoir storage. And uh, from 12 to uh, 48, we will have a, a, um, and a computation of a hydrological drought. 
This is an example of uh, um, a computation of this index in terms of drought sequences. So we use uh, uh, as base, as base uh, the um, computation of speed six months. And uh, uh, so we use uh, a time window of six months. And then uh, we consider uh, from literature um, that a drought starts in the uh, in the month when this index P6 falls below minus one and it ends when the same index uh, becomes positive for, for at least, at least uh, two consecutive months. Uh, we count the, all the droughts computed in, the, in this way, and we have the drought frequency, so the number of droughts events here uh, are, um, have been computed per decade. This is another example, so it's related to this um, uh, standard precipitation index. Uh, uh, and this, uh, uh, just to show you uh, how it is uh, able to um, to represent the drought event in this uh, in this map we have uh, um, the localization of uh, past drought events in Europe and here the calculation of speed uh, for uh, different years uh, using the EOPS data so observations. And we can see that for each year we have uh, that uh, um, speed well represent the, um, the distribution of the drought event that uh, is uh, been uh, effectively recorded in the past. Uh, this is another example of a uh, climate uh, um, extreme index that is a fire weather index, that is an index that is meteorologically based. And uh, uh, to compute it, we need daily precipitation, a daily maximum temperature, relative humidity, and maximum wind speed. Um, so the more uh, the fire weather index this index uh, is high, um, more, uh, more um, probably uh, we will have the uh, conditions to trigger uh, a fire. Uh, this is the uh, fire weather index uh, is, uh, um, uh, is defined in terms of categories. Of fire danger uh, that is um, that are uh, like um, described in this table. So we uh, can go from very low risk to extreme risk. This is an example of the fire weather index computed for the cortex score and uh, for the two of sorry for uh, um, uh, two different time slices for historical, the future, and, uh, and the two, uh, two time slices in the future, mid and far future, and then uh, an example of change in categories. So we can uh, see that uh, we have uh, areas in which uh, the uh, the, the probability uh, for a future <coughs> fire is uh, well uh, uh, well high in the future. Uh, this is just to um, show you uh, that uh, you can also uh, use uh, um, different indexes and decide to combine them and uh, decide to um, to to analyze for a um, specific region, uh, you, you can decide to uh, go and look if there is a combination, a compound action between different indexes. And uh, for example, a uh, scatter plot could be um, a tool, a way to um, represent this combination. So it's useful. Uh, this is uh, uh, the um, 
there are presentation of uh, for some indexes that uh, we we already uh, saw the evolution of the climate projections just to show you how is the change uh, how is uh, how has been computed the change for these indexes so the, here we have um, heat waves peak 35 the growing degree days that is another index uh, very useful for agriculture and then we have cooling degree days and heating degree days for wet and dry indicators we have p99 uh, Q100, that is uh, the uh, indicator based on discharge, so it is the peak discharge at uh, um, uh, 100, uh, at a return period of 100 years. We have also the um, number of uh, dry days, and uh, finally the DF, that is the drought frequency that we saw before. Uh, I don't know if it is visible, but all these maps, uh, contain some areas uh, where uh, we, um, we put uh, uh, dots, uh, black dots. These are areas where the signal is not, the signal of change is not uh, significant. So this is a, um, a concept that is uh, very important when uh, dealing with uh, climate projection. We need to uh, work always uh, uh, with an ensemble of models. And uh, uh, once uh, we uh, got uh, an average, an ensemble mean of these models, we uh, need also to provide the significance of the change so they robust if this the change the result that we obtain is robust robust or not um, in this uh, context uh, from a uh, working group one the robustness of change has been uh, chosen as at least 66% of the models uh, should have a signal to noise ratio greater than one, and at least 80% of them uh, must agree on the sign of change. Uh, if uh, these two conditions uh, are, uh, um, are uh, satisfied, <laughs> Um, so uh, the change can be defined as rubbers. <clears throat> the signal to noise ratio is estimated uh, for each model and it is uh, the ratio between the change and the standard devi deviation of a non-overlapping 20-year period um, of the corresponding pre-industrial simulation. If uh, we deal with regional simulations, uh, we don't have the pre-industrial period, so uh, our reference period for the standard deviation uh, will be uh, 1970-1999. Uh, this is uh, another example uh, on how to plot a model consensus. So uh, we can we, we should uh, put on our plot the significance we should uh, so we should uh, um, compute uh, the robustness of our signal uh, and then we can also uh, show uh, how um, the model uh, um, among the Istanbul spread um, according to the, the mean values. So this is a way to represent uh, the model consensus um, through uh, box plots. Um, okay, and then another concept that is uh, um, now is, has been, uh, been using a lot and uh, that uh, can be applied in order to overcome the dependency from emission pathways and single models is uh, the concept of global warming levels. Uh, in this uh, figure, uh, this is an example of, for, uh, of uh, two different scenarios, the blue one and the, the orange one, and uh, um, each uh, single member of the ensemble uh, belonging to these uh, two scenarios. Uh, we can see that uh, each member reach the, um, the degree of, uh, for example, two global warming, global warming in different years. 
each of the model uh, did this differently. So uh, the idea is to um, is to average the uh, so the among the uh, different scenarios and among all the models uh, the change computed uh, in the uh, that uh, very time slice that are typical each one for, for each of the models. So in the final uh, stage we will have a temperature change, for example, at a precise um, degree of global warming, for example, four, two, or 1.5 degree, and this will be an average, an ensemble mean of all these uh, members, because we can, if we if we refer to global warming levels, we can um, compute the mean uh, overall scenarios and overall uh, models. Okay, uh, this is an example of uh, the calculation of, of how this uh, global warming level uh, for each model is uh, calculated, but you don't need, we, we ne you will never need to calculate this because there is a table um, uh, calculated for all of the models both uh, all the CMIP-6 and all the CMIP-5 for all the scenarios containing the time slice corresponding to a single uh, global warming, a precise uh, global warming level. So this is just an example to um, understand how they work. Oh, no, I will, uh, okay, is, uh, I mean, you can find it, but uh, we have it and uh, we will use it in the lab. <laughs> see, see. <laughs> uh, Natalia will explain, but it's very simple, it's very easy. Okay. But, okay. No, it's not <laughs> a secret. <laughs> And uh, but just to understand uh, um, how they are calculated, uh, here I put the um, the change. Each point is the change of this single uh, time slice. That is uh, a time slice of twenty years, uh, with respect to the um, uh, to the pre-industrial uh, 1850, uh, 1900. So this is the, uh, the values of the change for each uh, of the time slice that is that there is uh, that are running time slice of 20 years. And uh, um, we, we can see that uh, three models, this, for these three models, the, uh, the first degree of global warming is uh, uh, reached differently no? in, the, in the timeline. Uh, so for this one, the CAN ESM uh, they reached uh, um, in the time, time slice 90, 91, 2010. In this other, the, the, for example, this green um, CNRM uh, like 10 years later, and then uh, the orange one uh, other seven years later, and then uh, and so on in the long the old time series, uh, we can see uh, when the, um, each model uh, reach the global warming level. Uh, so the idea then is that if we, uh, you will see in the lab uh, later that uh, um, if you use, uh, for example, this, uh, this, uh, the, the blue model, this model, and you want to uh, compute the change at uh, a global warming level, for, for example, of two, you will uh, need to use uh, this time slice, 2017, uh, 2035, uh, 2036, and Com um, to compute uh, as your ref, uh, as you as your uh, future period uh, for uh, a global warming level of two, but 
later, Natalia, later, now, because I finished. Uh, just uh, one thing is that uh, this, is, uh, this calculation uh, is done for CMIP 6 and CMIP 5 models. And uh, when uh, you um, use the, um, the regional uh, simulation that is driven by OSINX, Five now, um, you will found you will use the um, the time slice of the uh, of the driven model, no, of the drivers because there are no uh, there are no computations for regional uh, for each regional model. Uh, okay, that's uh, I've done. Okay, so uh, the idea now is that uh, each of you are in a computer, so I, I, I expect that you are already logged in in your computer because you did it yesterday in the other lab, maybe. Um, especially because the data that we are going to use now is available, in, I'm going to show you where, um, but you are not going to be able to use your data from your uh, notebook. So uh, it would be better if you um, use the computers here. So what are we going to do? We are going to approach a beginning of the computation that um, Francesco just told you. Uh, yes, to connect, you have to use your username provided by uh, when you arrive here and your password so that Okay, well, I'm going to first uh, explain how is uh, everything computing, and then we are going to start with the computation. So, as I was saying, uh, Francesca showed um, a nice figures that we uh, that, that they already compute the, um, the time slices and the uh, the changes computed uh, according to the global warming level. So that's what we are going to try to do now. What we need now is to have daily time series of climatic, climatic variables. In this case, we are going to use, just because of we don't have time to compute everything, uh, three different, I, I was going to show three different indexes uh, that are going to use maximum and uh, maximum temperature and precipitation, both at daily scales. And we are going to use the historical period and a future scenario. Uh, we are going to need the lower warming level time slices, the table that Francesca has just mentioned, and we are going to use a CDO and NCO to compute these things. So, if you want to have in hand the presentation, uh, you can go to this link, and you will have the PDF in case you want to copy paste, uh, and it will be uh, faster. So, I give you a minute if you want to access the presentation. Because I'm going to move forward and the, the link is going to. Yeah. Okay. Can you continue? Maybe can yeah. Are you were able to get the presentation? I mean, you are don't strictly need I'm going to put it again when I finish, but uh, okay. Yes. Not yet. Okay.
Okay, so I uh, move forward uh, because if not, we are going to run out of time. Uh, so we're uh, first the thing. The first thing you need to do is to uh, select for your computation. Yeah, so what we are going to do. <laughs> Okay, so in this case, and for this example, we are going to um, use the 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 period and we need to choose a time slice in the future to compute the difference, right? According to the global warming level scenario, and we are going to compute the change. But instead of using the traditional approach that uh, that's showed in the first samples that you choose far future or mid future, we are going to choose a time size for a global warming level specific one. So, first, uh, the good thing is that CDO has already a package that contains the uh, already um, uh, some comments that calculate these sets of uh, indices. Uh, so we are going to take advantage of the CDO uh, package. Uh, so if you uh, go to the link here, it will lead you to uh, the documentation see, of this um, uh, reference. And you can see, I, I have to cut here, but there are some more, that these are the, uh, most, not, not everyone is here, but most of the indices are already uh, uh, processed, I mean, uh, already, uh, there's a script that uh, runs for you. So we are going to use TDO to have a simple calculation. The link for the presentation. Okay. So the ones that were not able to copy, if you want to take a, a picture of the, the link and uh, use it for reference, so you can access the links that are in my presentation, if you need. Okay, uh, so we continue from here. As I was saying, uh, this is just a reference for the future. We don't need to check this now because I'm going to give you the comments for the specific indices that we are going to use. But if you want to back, come back home and process another different index, you will have this table in which there's a description on how to use this command and you can compute another index because here we just choose uh, a short set of indices. So the first thing you need to do if you are working in your in the, in the computers here is um, you need to open a terminal. Yeah, so we are going to work in a Linux in Linux environment, and you need to do this first command. And you, you don't need to follow me at this moment, but I'm going to describe the, the steps so that you can you have, you have some time afterwards, and we can guide you in you can go around. So the, the first command will uh, open all the libraries that you need to use. Uh, this is if you are working here. Then when you come back home, you won't. Of course, you won't need this. Uh, that will not work. And so, uh, if you want to ask, uh, access the data, we prepare a, a, a folder that is called Workshop Clean Risk. And uh, if you go to that directory, you will have a, a data folder and another folder for users. Uh, if you ls the data, you will find that inside we already provide for you and for this example data from different sources. So you will have a folder with CBIP5 data, a folder with CBIP6 data, uh, and then you will have some default exclusions. For example, Af Africa 44, uh, you will have South America 44, and uh, Europe at uh, 11. That are, these are the uh, codex simulations at uh, these different resolutions. 
And these uh, files, the .csv, are the tables that we have. No, because uh, yes, okay. Sorry, the um, this is the, the for Africa and South America is the old cortex. Um, uh, so um, these other um, files, the .csv are the tables containing the time slices for each model, for each scenario, and for each member of the semic six or the semic five. And we are going to take a look after. So if you want to work uh, in the computers, you need to, to switch uh, to the folder users, and you can create a directory for you with your name or whatever. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Access. Okay. Um, I'm going to explain the steps and then I, I'm going to pass by your computer so you can uh, access. And also Francesca is uh, going around. Sorry about that, but we, we will solve it now. Uh, so you can make a, a, a folder for your name and to work here, so you can access the data and do the calculations here. So if you want, then you can create your uh, your folder here. The the next step is if you take a look in how the, the data is stored. Also, if, uh, then I'm going to show you where to access the data because if you are not here. You will need to download if you don't already have it. Uh, but the um, the files are divided every five years because of the storage the capacity. Uh, so the first thing you will need to do is to do a merge time with CDO, and uh, you will need to provide this common CDO always in going to be first. Uh, in this case, the merge time uh, common. You will need to provide the, the path for the data. So, for example, you are working here, you will put all the paths that I already mentioned. In this part, you will choose if you are going to work with the South America, with Africa, with Europe, or semi five or semi six. And then you will need to move to the folder that contains the data, and you can, uh, of course, choose one particular region, one particular model. For example, the historical is what we are going to talk about now. The asterisk, so that you can find everything that matches. And you will store this in an, in an output file. Uh, if you check with an NCDAM the, the files that are uh, provided there, you will see that the, the precipitation is not in millimeters per day, and we need to be in millimeters per day. And the temperature, in this case, does match in the variable, is not in degrees Celsius, but in Kelvin. So we need to convert this, uh, this data. So you can use these commands. Uh, for example, for uh, converting the precipitation, if you want to work with a, an index of precipitation, you will do CDO, this moon C that is multiplied by a constant. I will multiply for this value to have the millimeters per day. The input file and the output file. If you want to compare the temperature, you will use the sub C uh, with this variable, the input and the output. And in case you want to use the MIPS 5 or the MIPS 6 data and you want to concentrate in a particular region, you can use the command uh, cell log that box and uh, provide the, uh, uh, the limits of your box with an input file and an output file. So once you have your data prepared, a, a first example is the computation of this, the index TBD, the maximum number of consecutive days with less than one millimeter of precipitation per day and per time period. Um, so if you want to uh, use, you already prepared the data as a merge file and then you convert the units, you can select 
because we are going to use the reference period 1980-1999. You can use this common to yield the year and uh, the years that you want to use as a reference, the input and the output file. And then you will use the common uh, that is, uh, as, I, as I told you, is in the, in the list that I showed you for ECA CDD. Uh, so you can do CD or ECA CDD with the already um, for this uh, period 1990-1999, and you store this information in an output file. So if you do it in this way, um, it's going to calculate the uh, index for the entire time slice. So uh, I just call this uh, output as total because it's not a value it expressed in days per year. So if you want to uh, convert uh, this variable just to be uh, more like, it's more easy to read the information if it is per year, you will have to divide by P. So you use the common that, that divides by a constant, constant, your input file and your output file and now, you will have the CDD for the reference period. Okay, so uh, for example, another um, extreme index that, that is also already in this uh, commons, the uh, CDO commons, is the uh, RX one day, that is represents the maximum one day precipitation amount per time period. And uh, you can use the same common if you already have your presentation prepared with the time size and the conversion of the uh, <laughs> per day. So you will use ETA RX one day. Okay, so uh, after this, you can divide by 20 years, okay? And you will have the RX one day for this reference time period. In this case, I'll show you that there's another index that is uh, widely used, and also Francesca showed one example from one of the papers, but it's not uh, pre-charged in CDO, but you can easily compute it. Uh, it's the number of days with Pmax uh, above 35 degrees. So for this index, you will also need to uh, select the time size, case you didn't do it for the temperature, and you will use the common greater uh, than a constant, which is DTC, and you will choose 35 because the temperature is already in degrees Celsius if you did the previous step. Uh, so once you have this output that I just call it output file because it's not necessary to have this file in store because it will contain uh, a, a, let's just say ones and zeros if it is true or false, that is greater than, than, a, than a constant. So after that, you will do a year sum. So this will sum all the variables in containing you know, outside loss, I found outside two, sorry. Um, and if it, if it is ones and zeros, you will compute the numbers of days that have, uh, has been, has been above the max. Uh, uh, sorry, above, it has about 35. And in this case, instead of dividing as doing as you did in the previous indices, you will need to do an, uh, a mean to have the, uh, the mean for the reference period that is 1980-1999. So you can use this common t mean with this auxiliary file that goes outside three, and then you will have the index in the auxiliary file for the uh, region you want you are using, the model you are using, and the reference time period. Okay, so if we uh, want to compute the, the change for these, uh, for any of the indices that you are using, you will need to take a look at to the, uh, this uh, file that is uh, table, 35 warning levels and uh, all that name. For example, if you are using uh, 75, and for example, if we say, okay, I'm going to use, I'm going to be dramatic. I will use the scenario RCP 8.5 and the global warming level four. So we need to know, as Francesca showed, when the model that I am using is going to reach that four global warming level, right? So in this table, it's already structured as this. First, the name of the model, 
del 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 de de R1, I1, B1 is uh, always the, the individual member. The RCP 8.5, you would say the difference, you would find that it's a, a RCP 4.5, RCP 2.6, and all of them. And this number is the lower one binary. So you can see that there's a column that has one, two, three, four, then one, two, three, four. So this is a, a, a very long file. And for this, you will have this. Uh, the initial year and the end year of this time slice that you want to have at your future. So if I am working with uh, this model that uh, is a uh, hard term yes, I'm going to take a look at this line and I will going to use uh, this member R1, R1, I1, P1, and I'm going to use the RTP8.5. I want to check uh, when it's going to be 40 degrees. So my uh, future period will be 2063, the 2082. But if then I need to do an ensemble, that is what we finally want to do. I'm going to take a look at what happens with the other members of my ensemble. So, what happened with this uh, IPCL CM5 uh, LR, the same uh, member and the same scenario, the same normal warming level. And for this model, it's a different uh, time size. So, I have 2053. 2075. So for this individual member, the period is going to be slightly different. And you see that for the same model, for the same RTPs and for the same global warming level, the different members have also different uh, time slices for the future. So if you have uh, many members inside for, for, for one particular model, and then you want to do a multi-model ensemble, you will need to check all all of the time classes that are always different, right? Uh, okay, so this is another example for MPI. The this uh, four degrees level is reached in uh, 2070 to 2091. So what we need to do if you want to express the change, for example, in CD or in TX35, is we need to have a uh, the, the previous calculation was for the reference period. So we need to repeat this calculation for the future time slice in which you are going to uh, change the cell year, the common cell year, instead of putting uh, 1980, 1999, you will choose from the table for the one that you are using. So uh, finally, you can uh, subtract the, the two uh, means in the, for one for the future and one for the reference period, and you will have your index change in this sense with CDO sub. <clears throat> so, finally, what you can do here in the lab, you can use the commands to compute the indices. We, of course, we don't have time to produce very nice figures here, so you can just Check your output with NC view, and you will see, for example, in my case, I am using uh, the computation for uh, a regional model, ICTP, uh, the, the ICTP model RFTM, and this is driven by the HALCHEM uh, 2 yet. And um, I'm choosing, as I was saying before, the RTP 8.5 for uh, four degrees of global warming level. Um, and this is expressed in days per years. So here, I don't know if you can see from, from this uh, screen, but it goes between zero and 300, being, for example, 300 is in the north of South America. And uh, this is the signal for this particular index. And this is done only for one model, one member. So if you want to compute an ensemble, you will have to repeat this step for every model and for um, every member that you are going to use. Uh, so, one last thing, and especially for the people that are listening in Zoom, because obviously you are not going to be able to <laughs> compute that ensemble here in uh, the, the couple of minutes that are remaining. But if you want to go home and you want to continue with these calculations that, as I was showing, are 
they seem rather simple for the computation of the indices. You can access via the SHTF node. And this is an example only that I, I usually use the, the French one. Uh, you can uh, select the, the project that you want to analyze, the MIP6, the MIP5, Cordex, and there you can download all the data that you will see available now in the uh, in your folders there in the computer. So the idea now is that uh, using the, the commands that we provided here and all the ideas that Francesca uh, also commented, you can choose uh, if you want to make it easier, you can choose the ones that I already show. But if you have an, a particular interest in others indices, you can check the, the table uh, that, are, as I was saying, is that. But if you go to the link, there are some more. And you can say, OK, I want to compute for my uh, mission the uh, wet days per time period, or the five, instead of one five day precipitation, whatever you want. And uh, then you can compute this difference, but instead of uh, computing the change for this variable in terms of the far future or the near future, you individualize yourself in this fixed uh, period and you choose the period according to the lower one mean level. So this is uh, all that we wanted to share. And now we are going to uh, pass by your computers to assist you if you need some help for the computations or uh, if you cannot access to the, to the data or some other problems that might appear. So if you have any questions about the first part or about this part that you want to share with the rest, we can discuss it now. If there is any question, maybe especially in the first part that it was more like uh, examples and theory, uh, or if you want to start your exercise, yes. Uh, a question is about in the procedure period around the warning level, warning tier, then the warning is this. So, isn't it easier to take 10 tier before and 10 tier after? So, in total, this will be like 21 tier. So, um, instead of 20 years. Uh, 20 years? So, the oh, you want to uh, can you show like, that the line figure? Uh, yeah. The previous one, okay. Yeah. So, uh, for example, the warning is reached in 2006, and uh, you take 10 years. Yes, ten years. Yes, in principle, is uh, there is one year, uh, exactly one year where in the uh, when you cross, no, because you reach the, uh, the the degree of global uh, warming, and then you take uh, exactly you that will be the uh, that year will be the central year, and then uh, you construct the bench lines uh, uh, of twenty years uh, with uh, that year in the center, so ten and ten. Uh, yeah. That's ah, that. <laughs> Okay, uh, no, it makes uh, sense in mean, that uh, right year and uh, no, it could be 21, 21, 21, uh, 21 years, yes, and uh, secondly, right? in fact, sorry, uh, in the if you look at the table that finds uh, of the global warming, yeah, area, yeah. which are uh, 21, no? and uh, but you get the warming level from the atmosphere, but when you are calculating anomalies from the arm, you take the base figure of the arm. So you should take the, the drivers, the, the one of the yeah. So, yeah, consider the drivers. Yeah. Thank you. There's another question. No, to come. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to 
Um, I'm sorry, and uh, just to, uh, to point that uh, here yeah, there is uh, um, a mistake in the in the calculation. I mean, uh, this is not to be considered because this is an, um, an index that is calculated for the whole period. So uh, we uh, will have as a result the maximum uh, consecutive dry days for the historical period. So it's not uh, here we uh, we make the, uh, the calculation year by year and then uh, the sum because you can calculate also this year by year then sum it together and then divide it to, to have the um, the, the maximum number of day days each uh, yearly, the yearly maximum number of day days. But this, if you do uh, just CBO, AKCDB with all the uh, time slides, you will got, you will get the uh, the maximum number of um, dry day, consecutive dry days for that uh, time slice. So you don't need to divided uh, uh, by 20. And the same for the other. The same is the is this one. For this one. 
No, it's, this one is not. This one is okay. I don't know where it's uh, Okay. We are here. It says unsupported protocol. I'm going to try to open the link. I cannot access the link today. The world on portal gives the seams. Ah, I can't compare the interests. I can't compare the interests. I can't compare the interests. Okay, we should talk about the to work so the release of global warming graph is very clear in the yes the world Uh, but we can uh, modify the presentation so that they have this in the...